Okay, looking at sign law and the ambiguous case. The ambiguous case is just talking about sign law because there is something, depending on how the triangle is made, we can look at triangles in a different way. So the, a good example is this one below. So we've got a weather balloon is tethered by two ropes. One is 7.8 meters long, which makes a 36 degree angle with the ground, and the other rope is 5.9 meters long. Determine the distance between the two ropes. So the most common example is the triangle that we're given here. So we've got, let's call these, let's call, that's going to be A. We've got B is already labeled there, and this is C. Okay, so A is where the gorilla is. Um, now, we can use sine A over A equals sine B over B. We want to find out what B is because then we can find out what C is, and then we can find out what length C is, okay? But there's a lot of different things that we need to kind of consider here. So first, let's just go through and do that. Um, sine A over A would be sine 36 over 5.9 equals sine B over 7.8 and then we're going to get B equals the sine inverse of 7.8 times sine 36 over 5.9. Okay, so B, we're going to get sine 36 times 7.8 equals, that's 4.6 divided by 5.9. That's 0.77, and now we're going to take the inverse. We're going to get about 51 degrees, almost right on. Okay, so then that means that angle C is going to be 180 minus 51 minus 36, and that's 93 degrees. So with that, we can take angle C, and we can say C over sine C. So C over sine 93 equals 5.9 over sine 36. And then C equals 5.9 sine 93 over sine 36. And we're going to get 5.9 divided by sine 36, we get almost 10 exactly. We get 10.02. So we'll just write 10.0. Okay, that's the most common example. However, what we need to recognize is what if the triangle looked like this? And that was A. Okay, so case two, what if A and B are both on the same side of the triangle? Well, what we need to do is we need to change what angle B was, okay? Now we're gonna change angle B by doing 180 minus 51. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit more detail when we do cast rule, but for now, we're gonna just figure that out. So 180 minus 51 is 129. Now, if I do the sine of 129, I get 0.777. If I do the sine of 51, I get 0.777. So they actually give us the exact same answer. So that's why that works. We're going to explain it why a little bit more later. But then that means that angle C in this case is 180 minus 129 minus 36. And we get 15. And you can see how this is going to give us a drastically different answer. So C here is going to be 5.9 times sine of 15. I've just rearranged the, this formula, subbing in 15 for 93. And then we've got sine 36. So 15 sine times 5.9 divided by sine 36, this one gives us 2.6 meters. So without more information, we'd actually have to include both of these answers. So either they are 
three, so either 10 meters or 2.6 meters apart. We don't know without more information, okay? So how do we know how many different triangles there are? Well, we have two triangles if, now we're always gonna be looking at what we call kind of B sine A, okay? So B sine A, what we're talking about is if we have this exact triangle, so we've got a triangle that looks like this. We've got A, we know angle A, we know side A, and we know side B. Okay, we don't know um, C and B and C. So we know B sine A. Okay, so the reason that B sine A is important is because if we were to draw a little triangle right down there, now if I did, if I wanted to find out what, let's call this the height of that triangle, if I wanted to find H and I knew what A was and I knew what B was, I would have sine A equals H over B. So then H equals B sine A. Now that's important because, we're gonna go back to, to this in a second. That's important because we can have two triangles if B sine A is greater than, whoops, B sine A is greater than H. Okay, so it needs to be greater than, well, A, excuse me, needs to be greater than B sine A because that A value could also come down here. Okay, so A is greater than B sine A. but it has to be less than B. Okay, the reason it has to be less than B, and I'll just draw another little thing on here, is if it was greater than B, it would go down through that line. And we know that this angle is given, so it has to happen. We can't go past that line because that would change the angle. Okay, so it has to be between B and B sine A. That would give us two triangles. That would give us the triangle here, because it would give us a hypotenuse here, and it would give us a triangle here. It would give us a hypotenuse there. Okay, so side A has to be greater than B sine A, but less than B, okay? Next, we can have one triangle if side A equals B sine A. Because if they're equal, well, then that's gonna be that triangle there, the right angle triangle. Okay, and we can have zero triangles if A is less than B sine A. The reason for that is that it would never actually reach the ground, no matter where we went, no matter what side, it would never complete the triangle. Because again, this angle has to be true, because it's given. So we need to actually get down to the ground to complete that, okay? So let's look at this. How many triangles exist? The other thing that we had to look for is if A is greater than B, the only way we can have this is we can only have one triangle because B is going to come up this way. And again, we said if A was greater, it would come down here. So if A is greater than B, it has to go that way because it has to be that angle. That angle is given. This side is given. This side is given. We don't know what this side is, but we can always figure it out, all right? So looking at that, um, we're going to set up these triangles. So we've got M, N, and M. So the triangle would look something like this. Okay, we know 42. We know 6.5 and 9.6. Whoops. 
9.6. So here, whoa, my 6.5 is terrible. So here, this is that case I was just talking about. This is one triangle. Again, one triangle because A is greater than B, or in this case, M is greater than N. We can only have one triangle. Okay, over here, again, we'll set up what we kind of have. We know we're given that angle. That's 39. We've got P is 5.6. And we've got Q here is 10.5. Okay, so we need to do B sine A. So Q sine P. It's always the opposite letter. So here, Q sine P would be 10.5 sine 39. And that equals, so sine 39 times 10.5 is going to give us 6.6. .6. So 6.6 .6 is less than 10, but greater than 5.6. So therefore, we have two triangles. Okay, now the last one. Do this in a different color. I don't know why, but I've already changed. So no going back now. So we've got 48 degrees. And then we would know that K is opposite of that. And then L, 8.1. So now again, we have to do K sin, or L sine K what we got. So we've got 8.1 sine 48. So 8.1, so sine 48 times 8.1 is 6.0. So that's not long enough. That would never actually make it. So what that tells us, or sorry, that's going to fit right in here. So what that tells us is that we have only one triangle, or one triangle, and it's the one we've drawn. We can't go back the other way. I don't know. We can go back the other way. We could have two. It'd be right in there. Mr. Shaw. Therefore, two triangles. Okay? So, just to make sure we've got all of this, if A is greater than it, all right. Yep, that's good. Um, so, if those two numbers were switched, this and this, then we wouldn't have any triangles, like in the last one. Oh, Mr. Shaw, because this is actually, whoops, because from here to here is actually 6.6 .6 centimeters, or meters, meters. That 5.6 will never get to the ground, no matter where I go. So this is zero triangles. That was my mistake. Sorry about that. Correct it. Okay, last one. We need to solve this triangle. Okay, so now we've got x. Um, y is going to be over here, and z. Okay, so 33 degrees, 4.1. 5.4. Now, really quickly, I would do it probably up here. I would just do uh, um, 5.4 sine 33 equals, because I want to establish if there are two cases or not. This is a ambiguous case note, so good chance there is. This is 2.9. 4.1 is greater than 2.9, so we're good to go. So therefore, two cases two cases. All right, so now we're going to start solving. So we'll just draw a little line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve it as though I was solving. So case one would just be like any other um, sine law question. So we're going to solve for y first. So we've got sine y over 5.4 equals sine of x, which is 33 over 4.1. So we get y is the sine inverse 
of 5.4 sine 33 over 4.1. And so we're going to get top of that is 2.9 divided by 4.1 gives us 0.77. The sine inverse, or po sorry, 0.71 is 45.8, so let's call it 46 degrees. Now right away, I'm going to go over here. And I'm going to write case 2. And then I'm going to write y equals 180 minus 46. And 180 minus 46 is going to give me 134. I can also find z in both cases really quick. So we have 180 minus 46 minus 33, I get 101 up here. And over here, we get, oh, we get 10. 180 minus, oh no, it should be 13. Let's just make sure we got the right numbers in both cases here. 180 minus 46 minus 33 is 101. And then 180 minus 134 minus 33 is 13. Okay, so then side z is going to be z over sine 101 equals, and I'm just going to use the x values again because they were given before. So then we've got, that's y. So then we've got z equals... 4.1 sine 101 over sine 33. I'm going to write it beside because I think it's going to go off of my uh, chart here. 101 sine times 4.1 divided by sine of 33. That gives me 7.3. So that's meters, centimeters. So there's Z. Y and Z, okay, and then we've got Z, Y, and then we're going to do the exact same thing here. We're going to have Z over sine 13 equals 4.1 over sine 33. Z equals 4.1 sine 13 over sine 33, and we're just going to type that in. And we get 